Hi, it's Diamond of Vlog TV, and I'm here and I'm kicking it with Tyree. All right, that's all I really need, to be honest. How you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Good, good, good. Uh, you already heard this all before. <laughs> how did you get started in the music industry? Um, so I started in the music industry at the age of 17. Um, I honestly just found that out like the other day, going through like my resume and everything like that. So literally right after I graduated high school, I started a fashion show, um, which also introduced um, up and coming underground artists in the city. And from there, I loved it. Um, I love the process of getting everything situated. I love meeting the artists and getting to know them. We even did like a little mini cypher like before the meeting. I just the energy was just like fulfilling. So I wanted to keep that momentum going. And um, that's how Vlog TV started uh, last year of March. So March 17th, 2017. Um, and this platform is uh, not only for just indie artists, but also bigger artists that are out there as well that also need PR work. Because um, that's what Vlog TV is a public relations and digital marketing agency. So we deal with um, artists uh, and on behalf of that, it's just like with talent management, um, public relations and branding and development and design and stuff like that. And uh, what artists have you worked with and what artists are working kind of underneath the name of Lock TV? So currently we are working with an artist right now that we're actually building right now. His name is uh, Lee Feezy. Um, so I got him on board. Um, I've worked alongside my brother Ma himself, uh, Genesis Renji. Um, I'm going to be working with Troy Tyler soon. Um, who else? I have a couple artists. I know that I was talking with, um, doing some PR work with uh, Looney and um, Jesus, what's his name? I don't forgot the guy's wow. name. Yeah, Guap. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> so most of me, I talked to them. Damn <laughs> he gonna be like, I don't even want to work with her no more. <laughs> so most of me, um, talking about doing PR work with them as well. And I think it'll be a good look. I want to hit my goal of working with 50 artists all 2019. So it's possible. It's like, possible. It's possible. <laughs> like all the people I interview, I would have never thought that I would have interviewed as this many people. Yeah. It's just, it just comes with time too. Just think about it like that. Like the more and more you do it, mm -hmm. the more and more respect you will get, and the demand will go up. Yeah, and I'm I feel so like that's ready. what happening right now. Anyway, it's, it's the whole vibe. The demand's gonna go up, no matter what. Man, the way that the city working right now is just incredible. In the our, way we're moving right now. In our favor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that part. <laughs> I feel like. What do you think that about? the Milwaukee culture, musically, underground, uh, mainstream. It is something that is totally unique. We literally have our own voice. We're our own industry. Yeah. Um, we're just different. Like we have all these different sounds. Um, coming from each and every end of the city and just to see people work and master at those crafts mm -hmm. is just beautiful um, and I think we're at the point now where artists know what they want to do mm -hmm. and how far they want to take it so they're going to take it as serious as they need to take it in order for them to be where they want to be yeah. and I've seen artists um, play with their sound uh, play with different sounds just to figure out what's theirs or just like come out with some like rad ass like like I some off the wall that. shit and it's just like really I, I love it I'm, I'm really here for the way that we're, we're moving um but I think that we could use and I was talking to my mentor and I was also talking to Reggie Bonds about this um he mentioned this as well he said you know we need protection and we need infrastructure yeah. here in the city. And I think that's really all that we're missing. And I agree with Reggie that day that we discussed that. And um, if we get those two things and we develop those two things, I think that we'll be secure. 
it just takes the right looks. You yeah. Know? The right people looking in, and it takes the right people pushing the content. Like, if you got people who aren't respecting the culture, mm -hmm. pushing the content, and not really, like, pushing it in a positive way, right? we're never going to get somewhere positive, positively. Yeah. So it's like, we just need to, I feel like we all need to come together as one. Just like, not just separating each other into sides and mm -hmm. genres and stuff like that. And to just be like one music culture together. Yeah. Instead of. I totally agree. Because I was talking with my mentor and he was just like, he was like telling me, he was like, man, you just need to leave the city. And I'm like, nah, not yet. <laughs> it was it like, ain't, ain't ready yet. nah, not yet. Because I was, um, when I was up there, well, not up there, but down there talking with him um, not too long ago, he was, uh, you know, just, we were just chopping it up. Um, and I was introducing him to a couple artists here. Um, and he fucks with it. He said, you know, he said, well, with the things that you're doing, your ideas, they're just, they're honest. He was like, they're just way too big for the city right now where, where you're at in your market. I was like, but I want to utilize my market and I want to help these artists get to where they need to be. Yeah. You know, getting them prepared for, you know, to see you. And, you know, he's an A&R. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, help me help them, basically. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing with Vlog TV. Definitely. Uh, how, where do you see yourself in 2020? Man, in his position, my mentor's position, honestly, um, <laughs> for real, because uh, I think that the the longer I do this, the bigger my reach will be. Um, shout out to Meek Mill, you because know, when he said that, I felt that. That's why I mentioned that. But like for real, I really feel like um, the further that I move along with Vlog TV. Um, and begin to develop and master edit and figure out you know myself through this business and through the industry i think my my voice would reach a lot more people mm -hmm. and that way i can bring a lot more people with me and help them and prepare them for mm -hmm. you know i feel like it's a lot of <laughs> trial and error too definitely definitely but that's that's not a problem because like i'm prepared for just about anything um i really because i mean i have to if i'm not i think I just be like scared and not ready to like not doing it. I ain't yet. scared. Like I'm not really afraid of much when it comes to this, like no. Cause everything I just feel like everything's been done already. Mm -hmm. And like you know what outcomes can come and what outcomes can't happen. Like yeah. it's either gonna happen or it's not. So right. you can't be on the negative tip like, oh this is never gonna happen but yeah, if you right literally stay, right if you positive. stay positive throughout it all, like I mean, self doubt does occur, like anxiety, depression, like that stuff comes along with it, and you know, but you really got to keep pushing, like no matter how hard it gets, no matter how many people are in your ear, like your time is gonna come. Don't worry about what other people are saying. Just like focus on what you need to do. And I tell the artists that I work with. Um, especially uh, Young Poppy, me and him have had countless conversations because um, I, I work with him more on like the full-time mm -hmm. side of things um, with me co-managing him and making sure that like, he just stays afloat whatever whatever he has to be going on um, just like your time gonna come you know just just pace yourself like yeah. you ain't gotta do all that extra stuff you ain't gotta always do what your fans want you to do I mean it's cool to respect you know them in a way like you know you want them to continue to fuck with you and stuff like that it's just like what do you want out of this mm. you know what i mean like they gonna fuck with you regardless like but yeah. what, is, what is it that you want them to understand about you through your music so that's gotta keep pushing Definitely. i just feel like in the i feel like by 2020 things will just be different yeah they'll be way different because everyone's coming into comfortability now and what they do no matter what because we've been doing it for about a, ye a year for yeah. like two or three years <laughs> like, there's people we've been doing it for five six years mm -hmm. and they're and i feel like the city also in general is coming into like comfortability mm -hmm. with music like the the milwaukee hip hip hop scene or the milwaukee music scene in general mm -hmm. the community is becoming more comfortable to it and more 
willing to put on shows, more willing to do things to help push it. Yeah. So I'm like, it's no per more perfect time than now. You can reach so many people and you won't even know you're reaching them because there's so many people out there with like ghost accounts. Mm -hmm. And you won't even know <laughs> you're reaching these people. Like, yeah. It's like, it's ridiculous almost. So it's like, another uh, question I had is just mm -hmm. like, I already asked you, like, who is the team behind Flop TV? I know there's like. <sighs> I love Flop <Bobby. laughs> TV. <laughs> um, so right now, um, you're going back to like the trial and error. They. The team includes Steve Robinson. He does photography and also videography. Um, Antoine Davis of We Got Flavors. And then the beautiful Rosella Joseph. Um, but starting 2019, when are you releasing this? Hmm? When are you releasing this? Uh, it'll be released later, so you won't be ruining nothing. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So starting in 2019. We are looking to expand the team, so bringing on more visual artists. Um, now that I know, um, like just now that I know like what I'm doing with this and how far I want to take it. So expanding the team, we're trying to get some uh, producers um, from out of state to come and fuck with the artists here. I know like one producer was on Instagram was like, "Man, I really want to produce a, an entire project." So I hit him up like, "You want to just come to Milwaukee and just like." Producer and local artists, I can hook you up with some people and we can just chop it up from there. So I'm reaching back out to him um, and then possibly just uh, bringing on another videographer from Atlanta as well. So we working. Hey, that's, that's big. Because like, I just feel like people need to know us. Like when you people hear Milwaukee, they think like, or Milwaukee, Wisconsin in general, they think like we got cows and shit. Like, yeah, they don't think we even have black people. Yeah, I'm like. <laughs> If y'all think y'all black people, like, y'all might even not think that we got rap music. Yeah. Like, we got some hot-ass artists here. So I had one of the um, videographers that I've been chopping it up with these past couple of days. He was like, bro, just hit me up with plenty of music, and he just don't know I'm about to flood him. Yeah. Like. like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people understand. I, I, I be telling people, like, I won't listen to, like, big-time albums sometimes because I'm just flooded with, like, Wisconsin music. Yes. I don't care. I totally like, don't even care what like Migos dropped or like what they dropped because I I'm not that's not. I'm me. like, well, what the city? What the city just dropped today? Like, <laughs> like what videos y'all got out that that, that y'all want me to put out here? Yeah, but I um, feel, I feel like a lot of people like me and you. We just gotta be like advocates for the whole like Milwaukee shit. That's why I love what like Radio Milwaukee did the mm -hmm. other day. I was telling my next question because we were just both there. Yeah. I was kind of seeing that experience because I've never been to one. Like, Me either. That was show. my first one. Yeah. And House of Ringy getting up. I know you guys have a close relationship. Like getting up and <laughs> destroying it. What was kind of that experience? Yeah. Experience? Well, um, see, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm from the hood. So, when I went there, I really felt that I'm not going to say that they were like, I mean, the vibes, the energy was all there. I was for it. It was it was just an awesome event. Um, we need more events like that as well. But I just felt like the reach to more of like, in their terms, like urban culture, like what I'm, I'm used to like trap music. I feel like. I hate when they call it urban. Yes, urban just, just like that's why I was just like urban, urban like. Black, <laughs> like I, it just mean black. Yeah, like, All right. I feel like they could like, cause I mean it's just a lot of artists out there. They missed. Yes. They got missed. They got missed, and that kind of, that kind of hurt me. Actually, it really did. I feel like you know, when you look at Looney and you look at Guapo and you look at poppy like those i feel like are the faces that need the most recognition like yeah they getting like you know three 10k views on youtube but like i feel they need our help as well their help as well like i mean i get you know people go for like a certain look but i just feel like you know we're all a community we're all one community 
and a lot of people are like yeah you know we just don't have to keep you know them a uh, separate i'm like bro for what wow for my what <laughs> My whole thing is to unite. Yeah. Every, every side. Like, I want alternate music. I want everybody to be in the same room. If I can get everybody in the same room, that's something. Like, if you get the hood niggas in the same room. Like, what's the problem with that? Like, house, like, I want to see that. I want, I'll just, they don't even got to do music together. But it's just like, hell, even if they did, that'd be awesome. Yeah. But it's just like. Getting them on those platforms as well is much needed as just getting the other crowd as well. Yeah. Like on those platforms, like we're just one big city. So that's really why, like, um, I got I gotta go back to my roots. Like, I mean, I was, you know, I fuck with the other side and like the pop culture, but like, you know, trap music is home. Like, I really grew up on that shit. Like, exactly. like I vibe with that like on a whole different like a spiritual level, and I feel like, um. You know, I could do more with the hood than I could do with like the pop culture now. We have it. I mean, I can do with, do with both, but I just feel like I can be like that extra push that's needed in the hood. Exactly. I feel like we we need that. That's what I feel like. That's what NPM is doing. Like no placements. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what they're doing. They're shout cool. out to shout out to Sunny though. Shout out to Sunny. We gonna be. We got some. We got some work coming. <laughs> He definitely is, I, someone said like they don't under, people don't understand what he's doing. Like if you understand like plays, like how to like strategically do shit, like in, within the music culture, he's doing it like mm -hmm. perfectly, like combining, I feel like he's combining like the indie side rap and the rap. It's like, you have to. Yeah. You have to, cause it's just like, then people just go unnoticed like certain sounds just go unnoticed and those are like the true tunes and tones for the city like yeah. we are the city like the hood is is milwaukee like that's what we are that but like our peace. voice is honestly much more like louder than and i think it needs to be heard are those stories and those those rap songs need to be heard like yeah they, you know like they be flashing money and guns and drugs like that but you don't really know these people like from a grain of salt like judging them from that man mm, that's trash no, some, i want to say like any of that stuff but that it's all that is it's a part of rap music. yeah if that's you, the culture like don't be afraid of the culture like like it's, come it's on get involved music, get them like, involved like where you think migos started from like they were had guns in their videos they had like yeah. they, they can still like, evolve until like superstars yeah. so that's what I'm, I'm trying to do i'm trying to be the my my goal Again, I got a lot of goals set for next year, but I gotta, I gotta be the hood publicist. I gotta be the hood publicist. If I don't, then I think I will be feeling the culture, and that's not what I want to do. Like we're visually pushing the culture. That's what Vlog TV is. That's what we stand for, and that's our motto and our movement. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Yeah, no, definitely. I feel that I, myself included, I want to push more into that side. I feel like I've done as much as I can mm -hmm. on kind of like the indie side of it all. I've done so much as I could. Yeah. And I feel like if I push more to that side, it's going to push the indie side up too. Yeah. It's just going to, if we all push both sides, it's just going to elevate us as a culture because I feel like we have so many talented people. Like We do. We have a lot. We have talk. <laughs> yeah. We have people who know how to get that shit done. Like We have, we have so much here that's going unused. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Hey, who, if, if not us, then you know, who, we gotta get... We can't, they can't do it alone, you know? They gonna need that motivation. Like, you said the Reggie Bonds thing, like, the importance of setting up infrastructure and paving the way, almost. Like, paving the way so someone else has the opportunity. That's all it is. That's pretty much what it is. Like, <laughs> what is kind of your end goal for every... Your career. I honestly just want to be stable, stable enough to just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, I never want to run out of goals. I never want to run out of um, inspiration. You know, I always want to find, you know, inspiration from others because that's where I get it from to just motivate, you know, them or myself just to keep going. 
Um, but I think like on terms of like business wise, I really I've been like thinking about starting the label. <laughs> nice. I've been thinking about it. Um, but that's like that's that's like the end goal. That's that's like, down the line. Yeah, it's yeah, down a lot. I've been I've been really thinking about it. Um, people have been asking me. They said, "Cause you like on the verge of doing it." Um, I'm like, I I probably just taken into consideration. The notes are already there for it. I'd support it. So we just go have to work towards just making it alive. I'd be in that bitch turning it up quick. Hey, period. <laughs> Get out my period. I, that was me. I was like, that's me at every live show like I've ever been to with my camera. I'm like, hey, y'all can bump me, but I'm gonna be bumping y'all ass back. That's with the stabilizer, the like, stabilizer like in there, like. <laughs> I, I, I be, it's be funny because sometimes I'll straight up be dancing with them. I'll be like, hold up, I got a camera in my hand. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? I'll be like half on their face, like, oh, shit, oh like wait up. <laughs> I was chasing fucking Genesis ass across the stage. Yeah. I was Some like, you know what? <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm just gonna stay over here. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna just stay right. Here. <laughs> I was like, Next somebody time, asked I'm me. Gonna... So, um, Jane, I don't know, like, if she asked me, like, how can I keep up with him when he's rapping, or like, how can I keep up with him in general? Like, both sides is not that hard. <laughs> like, it's not hard at all. Like, when you've been around, I've been around Genesis almost like three years. So like just watching him and like Master Scrap and just like develop to the person that he is and like watching him wanting him to grow. Like that's my best friend. Like I love that dude. Like for life. Like I'll protect him with my life. But it's just like I can keep up with him. Like it's not that hard. I, I was just actually. Like, <laughs> was I, that your I, first time like recording him? Yeah, that was my first time. Yeah. <laughs> I, got him I did pictures of him before. Mm -hmm. but that was my first time trying to like keep up with a performance because normally I try to keep up with everybody's movements. And shit like that. Yeah. But I cannot. I was like, bro, you everywhere. I'm just stay right here and just <laughs> sit the camera. But yeah, I feel like there's. I feel like there's a lot of people pushing the culture right now, as a whole, and collectively, we just need to get everybody in the room. Yeah. That's it. I was talking with uh, with Buddha about that briefly, just via uh, IG. But shout out to Jen for actually bringing them out that night. Yeah. He snapped with that. Yeah, like I, I knew about it, but I was just like, "Oh wait!" I was kind of like surprised at the same time. I didn't know the issue was gonna be there or Matt or um, Emat. But I'm like, that's shout what, out. That's insane. Shout it's out. insane. Because it just it shows the collectiveness mm -hmm. that we can't work together as a group. Yeah. You know, we we Milwaukee into that like Period. in a sense like <laughs> we gotta be the f faces or. Whatever we gotta do to push the culture, I try to not be a face, but like I'm behind this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I try not to be to be a face either, but just like I think back then I just wanted to always be behind the scenes with what I'm doing, but like now I have to, and I'm kind of I'm I, I want to say kind of I'm really getting comfortable with being the face and being the voice, mm -hmm. so it doesn't bother me as much. That's, that's, that's <laughs> It only bothered me when I was watching myself on camera. Really? Only when you edit in your own shit mm -hmm. and you like consistently just watching yourself, like it just got like kind of uncomfortable. So I switched it up, and I like switching it up, mm -hmm. but I think I'm gonna switch it back. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell nobody like, how I'm gonna switch it back, but I, it's gonna switch back one day. I it's think it's gonna be in its own. It's gonna be a separate entity. Entity. I think hearing this. my voice is like what keeps me like away from like talking because i know um i know i did i did the voice for black winter in white summer with mall and genesis yeah. and they played it back and i'm just like oh who is that <laughs> it was like that's Stop you it. i'm like cause, like me talking i feel like i'm me talking right now and hearing myself right now is totally different from like yeah, the mic like, and i'm just like i cringe and just, i'm like oh but I gotta get used to it, so. Get used to it. Get used <laughs> to being in front of the camera, smiling and shit, you know. That's, do you ever, like, think about, like, would you say you want to open up a rec record label? Like, the steps that goes into it and, like, what are you planning on? Kind of, like, modeling it off of? Hopefully, I'm, like, 
close with Hove <laughs> at that time, at that point. Um, Cause I'm gonna tell you like this, I'm not trying to be cocky or anything like that, but I think along the lines, I would probably become like the female Hove because when I first heard Hove, it was from the Black album. And ever since then, I just been like on a journey, like just wherever he went, I went like whatever move that he made, I was like always focused on it because it's just amazing how this man has been in the industry for 30 plus years and no plays have been missed. Yeah. Like is watching him just grow and like develop after all these years. That's what, that's the level that I want to be at. So when it comes to like running a record label, I want to model it similar to how he did, but like with a twist, of course. Um, Show own flavor. Yeah, and like just and just like continuously reaching out to the growing artists of like the underground um, in different hub cities like Atlanta, New York, New Jersey, Philly, of course. Shout out to my niggas in Philly. Hope they watch this. They don't see this. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so just like modeling it like that. Cause if I can get him to be a mentor and him help me with that, then that would be that'll be clutch. That'd be like some goat shit right there. Hell yeah, it would be. Cause it's a lot that goes into a label. I'm also gonna reach out to my mentor um, as well, cause he owns a label too down in Chicago. Um, just talking to him about it, but that's like a along the lines. I feel that. So getting there, so I, I got the notes written down of how I. I think it's gonna go. That's how it matters. <laughs> Have it written down and then it's gonna come back. It's gonna all come around. It's gonna come back tenfold. I, <laughs> I think it's funny that you kinda like model it off a of hoe. That's that's dope. I feel like I modeled a lot of shit off of like uh Martin. I was I talk about that in super early episodes. Mm -hmm. How I literally I try I was trying to model things off of like how Martin did it and how he did it with HBO, like mm -hmm. he had Def Jam, like he brought all these comics up, like underground comics that nobody knew, and tried to bring them up as the host. Mm -hmm. And then he had Martin, which was like a generational show. Like, if you don't know Martin, it's kind of just like yeah. you're missing out on a lot of like 90s. If you don't know Martin, general. you just don't know culture, like black yeah. culture. Like, you have, I have yet to meet somebody who's never watched Martin. Really? Or just know, like how you said, like with his influence on uh, the comedy industry, like knowing that, like you just don't know Martin. Like. Yeah, Martin. <laughs> Martin's so influential to me in general. Like I, I want to model like almost everything I do off of how he did it, mm -hmm. but in my own way. Yeah. You know? It's like I'm, I'm just super weird, and I don't think people don't know that because they don't meet me a lot. Or they see my videos. I'm a weird ass person. Like I'm not like weird i would just be quiet in front of you type shit mm -hmm. but my concepts and my like thought process is weird and like, yeah. it's just super dark like i say that like any, <laughs> any like any content that comes out outside mm -hmm. of like music and it's like narrative it's gonna be super like weird and dark but it's gonna be comedy almost. yeah a lot of stuff i try to make fun of stuff so it's like i'm writing it in a way to make fun of it <laughs> so it's like <laughs> So it's weird and dark, so it's like, so I try to like, like modeling after like your influences is like a great way to like keep you focused. It is. It's a very great way. Like I'm telling you like, I, I, I'm a female hoe in the making. Like, <laughs> is that, it's, how, that it's already on? there, like it's already planted, like I just feel it, like literally. I've been feeling it for years and the way that I'm moving is just like. Y'all gonna, gonna see. Right there. Right there. <laughs> right there. Then it moves on to my next question too. Like, how would you describe Diamond to someone who's never met you before? Um, Diamond is surprisingly shy. <laughs> um, I'm very antisocial. Um, unless like you know me, like in public, you would probably. I'm very like unapproachable but like other than that like I'm very fun to be around extremely creative um just like if I care about you 
and I believe in you, I will show you better than I can tell you. Like, really be on you about making sure that you stay focused. Um, she's a hard worker. She's been a hard worker. Um, I've been breeded to become a hard worker. Uh, shout out to my father for that and my brothers. Um, there's nothing that she can't do, honestly. Is she a Virgo? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important. That's the most important part. She's she a Virgo. She's a Virgo. All time. Cause like honestly, she like so many Virgo. people don't like Virgos, and it's, I'm kind of like getting like that vibe that that some Gemini's get. Like people be like bashing Virgos just as much as they bat like bash That's Gemini's. Gemini's. I be like, bro, is it because like we rule the world, like? See, Aries just be back and chilling. <laughs> we only doing that. Aries are so mysterious, but y'all are like, y'all are so like cool. I know two Aries. Like Poppy, he's an Aries. I have a friend who's an Aries. And like you, like y'all are just like super cool. Like y'all just like standoffish, but y'all are just y'all are hard workers as well. Like really motivated and dedicated, like to whatever y'all put your mind to. And I really support y'all for that. For real. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to thank you. Log TV send down and kicking in with Tyree. Always, always. If there's anything you want to bring up, just promote. Oh yeah, right 2019, 50 artists. That means I'm gotta work with three to four artists a month. You want to work with me? Just let me know. Hit me up, and we can get started. Shout out to Def Jam. Shout out to Epic. Thank you guys for tuning in. Y'all have a great day.